you're feeling better now because last week you said you were feeling a little sick. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm great now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Happy to hear. And it's funny, Marina, after last time we caught up, uh, I noticed, you know, you were doing an English interview or talking to somebody in English afterward and we're hearing your English is good here now. So you were hiding it from me. How long have you been learning English? <laughs> Não, na verdade, entrevistas assim... Live interviews like this for me are still a little bit tough, so I avoid speaking my rusty English in these types of situations, but I'm still continuously studying, I'm improving. I began studying English a little bit late as an adult, so that's, that's tough, but little by little, uh, I'm getting there. Who knows, next time I'll speak in English in the interview. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it sounds good so far. All right. You know, I understand the more complicated things can be tough, but I think you got kind of the basics down from what I've heard. So good job there. That's good to hear. Um, and of course, Marina, congratulations on the win you got recently. Uh, it was a great performance. But, you know, afterward, you stuck around a little bit in Vegas. And did you do any gambling? What did you do with the extra time in Vegas? You have had fun, it looked like. Yeah, so uh, after the fight, it, it was such a rush, right? So after the fight, I ended up staying a little bit in Vegas. A friend of mine, then at the Quarto, was going to fight, was going to fight in the headliner of the last Invicta card. So after I fought and I won, I still stayed a little bit to help her with her training. Um, that was fun, and no, I didn't bet at all because that would just I just lose money like crazy because I have no idea how to do that. All right, good thing you didn't do that then, because uh, <laughs> it wouldn't have been a good way to you know cap off the the celebrations with the, your win and all that. So that's good. But you know, it's funny, Marina. Last time we talked to you, you mentioned uh, how you like to skateboard every now and then, and we saw you playing basketball. What the day after <laughs> your UFC win and all that, and you know, landed some some good shots there. What can't you do, Marina? <laughs> uh, deixa eu pensar. Não sei. Hmm, let me think a little bit. Actually, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, since I was a kid, I I always liked doing sports and I like training. I was always very competitive. So what I do, I always try my best, even at chess, which I suck at. But when I play, I try it. So after the fight, I had the opportunity to play a little bit of basketball. Even though I was in so much pain, my body was hurting so much, but I still needed to try it out. Of course. And I mean, is it was it important for you to kind of take that extra time after the fight to just have a little bit of fun? I know you said you like to do just nothing in your free time, absolutely nothing, but, you know, had some fun activities here this time. Was that important for you? Yeah, definitely. It definitely was important for me. My nothing isn't exactly nothing, right? So when I'm in my free time, normally my nothing implies waiting for my next fight and getting prepared for that. So, But right after a fight, after I had won the fight, doing nothing is actually doing pretty much nothing. It's going out for a walk, um, getting to know the city, um, having a little bit of fun here and there. What I really like to do is eat, so eat a lot, and that's about it. Las Vegas was a little different. It was more divertido, vamos dizer. There you go. Indulge a little bit. Uh, you earned it, so <laughs> totally understandable there. And I, you mentioned Invicta and Diana Torcado's fight that she had going to Kansas City for that. And I'm just curious, what, what do you thought of that experience being a part of the Invicta fight process, kind of seeing how they're doing things right now, and then obviously helping out Diana for that fight. What was, you know, that whole experience like for you? It was nice to help her because she's always the one to help me out with my training camp, so it was great to give back. It was right after my fight, so I was still a little bit sore, so I wasn't able to help her with sparring and body work, but I was able to be there in her corner and give her some advice and some help together with her coach. So it was really nice to support her in this, and, and it, was a, it was a hell of a battle, right? It was a five-round battle with two great fighters, so it was really nice to see the fight. Um, yeah and do you like to do corner work i don't know how often you get that opportunity to but you know in this case uh, is that something you enjoy doing 
Para falar a verdade, é muito It's actually a lot more tense than fighting itself. Um, so I prefer fighting than being in the corner. But when you're a corner, you can really have a different point of view from the fight, which helps me as a fighter. So it's fun. I like it. Right. I imagine uh, maybe a little bit more nerves for your friends than yourself. I know that a lot of fighters say that that's an issue they struggle with. Com certeza, é. Eu já, eu já sei como, como é. Yeah, I already had an idea how tense it was for a trainer to be in that position, but being there myself and feeling it, all the tension, I had a better idea of what it was and how difficult a job it is to be a trainer. Absolutely, I can imagine. And, you know, a very interesting thing that Invicta's got going for him, though, Marina, is the, the open scoring and, you know, being in the corner like you were, you got to really see that nice and up close. So I'm just curious, you know, what are your thoughts on the open scoring idea in MMA? Is that something, you know, maybe you'd like to see the UFC try that out at some point? <laughs> at first, I thought it was a great idea to have, to be able to create a round by round strategy. Um, but after having experienced it close up, I actually think that a lot of the emotion of being in MMA is lost. If the fighter knows that they won the first and second round, they know that they can slow their rhythm in the third. So for me, knowing beforehand what's going on in the fight, the results, uh, lose a little bit the, the emotion and the essence of MMA. All right. Well, it's kind of funny that you say that because then you look at your fight, which you had before that against Michelle Watterson. And, you know, you were just in the driver's seat the whole time, pedal the metal, putting the pressure on her, doing your thing. Um, I mean, just when you look back at that performance now, having had time, you know, to watch it since then and break it down a little bit, uh, were, were you happy with it? Was that kind of what you expected going in there? It obviously it turned out well, but overall, are you pretty content with it? I was actually really happy because I was able to apply the strategy me and my trainer had drafted in basically two weeks, right? So I was able to apply that and I did a good job. The idea was basically two things, to stay calm and to have five strong rounds. I didn't want to give a boring fight for the fans and I don't believe I did. So I was really happy with the performance. That definitely wasn't boring at all. Um, you know, despite being pretty one-sided, still made it very exciting as all your fights are in general. But uh, man, Marina, there was one moment in that fifth round where I think she landed her best shot. And unfortunately, they never showed replay or anything, but it looked like she caught you with a kick and it you know, maybe hurt you a little bit, but I'm just curious, like, what was that a bad moment? Do you remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> so if I'm not mistaken, I think it was a moment where I was backing up in the fight and she kicked my left knee and right after she kicked my face and it really landed. I remember at the moment I felt it hit my face, I felt her foot hit my face but I didn't really feel the impact. I was just really angry that she was able to get that shot. So if I'm not mistaken, I think I attacked her right afterwards because I was really pissed off by that. But the fact is, it didn't really have much of an effect on me. Um, my cheek swelled up, and due to that, I wasn't able to have my post-fight interview with Daniel Cormier, which I realized the next day, and I got so angry because it, I wasn't cut up, I wasn't hurt badly. I would perfectly have been able to do the interview. Um, it was just a matter of being kicked in a place where you're not really used to being hit that much, so your body acts in a pretty weird way. Yeah, it's funny too because you did end up doing the the media interviews backstage. I remember watching that, so it's like, oh, she could have spoken to Daniel. But uh, <laughs> was the cheek swelling annoying? Like that seemed like a weird thing at the moment. Have you ever experienced anything like that? No, só ficou um pouco feio, né? Well, it didn't really hurt, nor was it much of a nuisance. It was just ugly, right? Um, and it bumped me out because it was a matter of UFC protocol. They thought that I had broken something. I, I insisted that I was okay, that nothing had gone wrong, but they insisted also that I needed to see the doctor, and that's why I ended up losing the interview with Daniel Cormier. Afterwards, I gave a bunch of interviews, hours of interviews, and I realized that I hadn't given the one that kind of mattered 
it the most when right after the fight that I would be able to talk to my fans and share my happiness in having won the fight. So that was I was pretty bummed out by that. But that was actually it. Uh, later in Vegas, I was wearing the mask the whole time, so no one could really see it. That's that's very true. And well, I'm no Daniel Cormier Marino, but I hope I can help make up for your missed interview there. Maybe next time. So, uh, And also, it's a good thing that, you know, at least the jaw wasn't broken. So that's that's always good. Um, but, you know, as for this fight's whole process and everything, it was really kind of unique how it came together on such short notice. And because of that had to be at flyweight, seemed like it took you you were late into the country, right? Having to get the visa stuff is always a little bit annoying. Um, you know, was this fight planned ahead of time or did it completely come together last minute? Like, tell me about the process of making this come together. Were you worried that it wouldn't happen? Like, walk me through it a little bit. So after my knockout of Amanda Rebus in January, uh, we I talked to my trainer and we realized that Michelle Watterson would be a great opponent to fight next. After the fight, we talked to the UFC and we told them that that was an opponent that we were thinking about. But we never really received an answer from them. We didn't know if they had talked to Michelle or not about this. So when we were told with 11 days notice that they were planning to do this fight, I, I couldn't help but accept it. I needed to accept the fight. Uh, of course, they offered the flyweight, so that was important for me to be able to accept it and to be able to really do the fight. But even though it was rushed, we were ready. We were prepared. Yeah, and obviously it did pay off. And, you know, you mentioned how you implemented the game plan with the full five and look good doing so. Obviously, it's always nice to get the uh, the finish as well. But it was, I think, very impressive for a lot of people to see, you know, the cardio last for you full five rounds uh, with that output that you put out and, you know, everything has power behind it. Uh, was that important for you to kind of show people too that, hey, you know, I can go full five. I'm main event ready. I I'm in the spot now that I know I'll be in at some point. Com certeza. Isso é uma das coisas que... That was definitely one of the best outcomes of the fight. Uh, I was able to show that I'm ready to fight five rounds and five exciting rounds, even on a short notice. Imagine what, how would it have been if I would have had a whole fight camp. It would have been even better. So I think we sent the message very clearly that I'm ready to fight the main event. I'm ready to fight five rounds. And I'm sure that UFC will call me soon to be able to do that again. Ah, very great points indeed. And you know, speaking of them calling you again, we got, you know, Dana White was saying that they're looking at you versus Mackenzie Dern next. And I know you said, uh, maybe not so fast. You know, I just did a quick turnaround and this one would be a little bit quicker again. So uh, obviously you're looking to wait a little bit now, Marina, maybe not, maybe Mackenzie Dern, but not as quickly as they wanted. What's the status on that situation? <laughs> Right after the fight, UFC told me they wanted me to fight in July. I was, I was incisive that I, I would only fight in September or October, but Dana already made it clear that the next fight to make is me against Mackenzie Dur, and I'm totally up for that. I'm, I would love to fight her. In fact, it's just it needs to be September, October. I need a complete fight camp. Um, if they want to keep Mackenzie as my opponent, that's great. If they want to change and put another opponent, that's also fine. It just needs to be September and October. I've had enough short notice fights for the moment into a new fight camp. Yeah, I mean, you really saved the day you know, in this last fight by taking the main event spot in the way that you did. So uh, totally understandable there and see what happens uh, in the meantime. Um, and I know that Joanna is somebody you've really wanted to fight for a while now. Of course, she's former champion and all that, but... I spoke to Joanna actually a couple of weeks ago, Marina, and it was disappointing to hear her say that, you know, she wasn't interested in fighting you because I asked her about that and, you know, said that maybe it's not as worth it for her as it is for you. And, and I'm just curious, is it kind of a bummer when you hear that kind of thing coming from the person you'd really, you know, love to fight? If I were in her place, a former champion trying to get back at the belt, 
maybe I'd act the same way um, because she knows what she has to lose with this. But she knows that one day we're going to fight. One day we're going to meet each other in the cage. That's if she wants to continue fighting, right? Because it's been such a long time that she hasn't showed herself up in the cage. I'm not really sure if she wants to continue fighting or not. So if she wants to continue fighting, we're going to fight if it's for the belt or a contender fight to be able to fight for the belt. It's going to happen. Yeah, that would, that would definitely be obviously a fantastic matchup and one that fans, I think, really just want to see more and more as you continue to win and look great out there. And um, she seems to kind of be only interested in maybe Rose or Whaley, uh, Carla, kind of, you know, the, the top where the title is right now. And in that meantime, Carla, who you have fought already, um, went out there and beat Yan Nan just very clearly, very impressively dominant performance. When you see something like that, does that make you feel even better when you consider how you know, a lot of people thought that you should beat Carla in your fight with her? I watched the fight with my trainer and I was really happy because I was able to see that I actually did a really good job against my fight against Carla. Some people thought I won the fight, some people didn't, but it, it, it was clear for me that I did a really good job against the fighter who she is. It, it also made clear for me that next time that we're fighting, I'm going to have a complete different fight. I'm going to show up as a different fighter and get a different result. Um, Carla's a great opponent. But yeah, I think that just proved really that I did a great job and how next time things will turn out differently. Yeah, and hopefully we do get to see it at some point sooner rather than later, maybe. But, you know, despite Carla's maybe questionable wins uh, ahead of that one that she just got, right now there still seems to be a question around is Carla get the title shot or do they do the Whaley rematch with Rose? And you know, I still I feel like Carla earned it with that performance, but I, I don't know. When you look at it, do you think that she should get the title shot next, or do you give it to Whaley? Or, I mean, how do you feel? Eu eu colocaria Carla para. If I were the fight maker, I would choose Carla for the title belt. I think it's an interesting match. It's a rematch, which is bound to be interesting, and it's just the right fight to me, right? I think Whaley can wait a little bit more, and if you wanna wants to fight, maybe fight against Fiona. That's if she wants to continue fighting, right? And if Carla were to fight against the belt, I'd be cheering for Carla to win the belt so that I could have have my rematch against her again in the title fight. Yeah, that'd be a cool story to see it play out that way, uh, <laughs> if it can't all fall together. But uh, you, you mentioned Whaley right there and maybe the Joanna rematch, which would be, everybody would love to see that. But, uh, you know, she's not the champion anymore, but a fight with Whaley, Marina, like, how, is that still something that's pretty exciting for you? Like, what do you think of that potential matchup if, if they were to say... Hey, do you want to fight Wei Li next instead? <laughs> Anyone who's ahead of me right now in the division interests me. Wei Li is a great fighter. I know that we would be able to show a great fight. So yeah, it definitely interests me. Anyone who's ahead of me right now in the rankings, I have to be. So I'd accept. Of course. And, you know, whoever it is, you can't go wrong. It's throw right? You're in a division where everybody's just so good and exciting. All the matchups doesn't matter who it'll be a good one. We know that, but all right, Marina, I will, you know, leave you with one last thing here. And as we wait for whenever you do get back in action, uh, September, October ish, when you're aiming for now, I mean, just, what are you, what are you looking to do? Some things to do during this break period, a bit for you to recover, do whatever you want, essentially, or are you just gonna just kind of chill, or do you got some plans in mind? <laughs> Actually, my plan has already begun. I'm already back to training, back to preparing myself for the next fight because we already have a name, right? Everybody knows the next possible name that I'm gonna fight against. If the opponent changes, it's just a matter of adjusting my fight plan a little bit here and there, but, but yeah, my my plan has already begun of what, what I'm gonna do until September and October. And enough resting. Resting was in Vegas, now I'm back to work. So, more nothing, but not nothing, right? Is this qualify? <laughs>
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Marina. Well, can leave it off there. Um, you know, it's always so fun getting to chat with you and, you know, watch your fights and the career that you've had so far and look forward to whatever's next, whenever's next. And, um, you know, always, always happy to chat with you and, you know, give you some love and spotlight whenever you could uh, use it. So I appreciate you giving us the time and it's always great. Um, big congratulations again on the win. It was an awesome one. And, uh, you know, just thank you so much. Obrigado for uh, taking the time here. <laughs> thank you. See you next time. Yep. <laughs> of course. Thank you. <laughs>